extraterrestrials are not going to make it easy for us. What if the cosmos is a giant chat room filled with aliens and we're just not smart enough to grasp it? For decades, humans have attempted to make contact with aliens, whether by sending a golden record of our greatest hits into space aboard Voyager or investigating the cosmos microwave background radiation for signs of life. However, according to a new hypothesis proposed by a quantum physics professor at Imperial College London, alien communication may have been buried right under our noses the whole time in the starlight. What could these communications be? Join us as we investigate why physicists believe intelligent extraterrestrial civilizations have left us messages in the stars. When we look up at the night sky, we may be inadvertently listening in on an alien conversation. At least, that's according to Imperial College London quantum physicist Terry Rudolph, who recently published preprint study speculating that an evolved extraterrestrial society may modify the light coming off stars to communicate across large distances, much like a series of interstellar smoke signals. Rudolph's theory proposed that life could exist on other worlds and intelligent civilizations had attempted to communicate with mankind. He hypothesized that an advanced society could manipulate the light emitted by stars and utilize it to communicate with other planets over vast distances with his paper, Perhaps They're Everywhere. He proposed a theory about how undetected distributed quantum computations and communication may be developed for extraterrestrial civilizations by utilizing the thermal light that comes from stars. As a well-known physicist, he presented a lot of deep physics to describe how entangled photons from multiple stars might be manipulated to deliver a certain message. A photon is a tiny elementary particle that serves as the fundamental unit of all light. These photons, according to Rudolph, are what advanced civilizations have studied and know how to employ as a smoke signal or even the starlight version of Morse code. Humans on Earth may simply continue to gaze at the stars unaware of their starlight Morse code until our scientists and physicists can decipher what each twinkle pattern of the star implies. Before Rudolph discussed the technological potential in physics, several creative minds had been overwhelmed with thoughts of advanced civilizations coexisting with humanity. For many years, most scientists, particularly physicists around the world, sought possible answers to the topics of other existing life forms. Frank Drake, one of the physicists, then investigated this largely unresolved subject and devised a mathematical equation to address it. Frank Drake devised his equation to calculate the number of intelligent civilizations located inside the boundaries defined by the subsequent factors, in the case of humanity, the Milky Way galaxy. The letter N in the equation represents the number of intelligent civilizations to be discovered, whereas R represents the rate at which stars emerge, which may allow adjacent planets to gain intelligence. Other variables show the fraction of said stars that have planetary systems, as well as the number of planets in a solar system with a habitable environment. Some variables also reflect the planets that actually support life, while another is the proportion of life-sustaining planets on which intelligent life forms have been identified. Another portion shows intelligent civilizations who have lived long enough to evolve communication technology to the extent of broadcasting their presence into space via signals and L is the amount of time that these civilizations existed before transmitting these messages. These variables as routinely cited numbers reduce the equation to N equals L over 10. We have been transmitting into space as a human civilization since 1974. According to this equation, even if we as a species cease to exist in 2074, there would be 10 advanced civilizations in our galaxy alone. Scientists also attempted to break down these figures using the Kardashev scale. The Kardashev scale characterizes advanced life into three types. Type 1 civilizations, Type 2 civilizations and Type 3 civilizations. Type 1 civilizations can use all of the energy available on their home planet for a variety of purposes. According to scientists, human civilization is approaching this category. The majority of experts agree on this because we are currently at 0.7 on the Kardashev scale, with a full Type 1 being approximately a century away. Type 2 civilizations can control and channel all of their host star's energy. 
while Type 3 civilizations have access to power equal to that of their host galaxy. Even before the Kardashev scale and the Drake equation, many scientists were certain that there were numerous advanced civilizations coexisting with us but scattered around the Milky Way galaxy. It wasn't until a lunchtime debate between astrophysicists that doubt was placed on the old beliefs, and the outcomes of their debate continued to challenge even modern views. The debate that sparked theories about the presence of sophisticated civilizations occurred in 1950, when Enrico Fermi and his colleagues were discussing the possibilities of alien life over lunch. Fermi's inquiry to the table became well known because it was straightforward. He just asked the group, where is everybody? Because no one had a response to Fermi's question, the room fell silent while everyone continued to eat their lunch, and this became known as the Fermi paradox. Essentially, the inquiry was intended to criticize the concept of interstellar travel, about which Fermi was unsure. However, if there were hundreds of intelligent civilizations strewn over the stars, why haven't we heard from them? The Drake equation and the Kardashev scale were derived from these questions. Since the Milky Way is about 10 billion years old and 100,000 light years across, if aliens possessed spaceships that could move at 1% of the speed of light, the galaxy would have been colonized 1,000 times by now. The Fermi paradox is the explanation for why we haven't heard from any other life. The Fermi paradox has yielded several answers for the silence we've encountered, but some scientists believe that silence is the result of something, which they've dubbed the Great Filter an evolutionary wall impenetrable to most living forms. There are two basic possibilities for the Great Filter. According to these scientists, it is either in front of us or behind us. If it happened before us, experts believe it happened during the genesis of life or during the transition from single-cell prokaryotes to multicellular eukaryotes. Regardless, it demonstrates that we are a rare case and that contact is not taking place since we are among the few, if any, survivors. On the other hand, if the Great Filter is ahead of us, we will not be able to communicate since advanced civilizations have reached a wall and ceased to exist. This suggests that we will also strike a wall at some point. Other scientists also proposed hypothesis for the literal radio silence. Some speculated that perhaps the vast majority of the cosmos is populated and communicating, but we are trapped in a lonely location far from the action. It's also possible that Type 3 civilizations aren't interested in talking with a lower civilization like us. If they have the might of a whole galaxy, perhaps they are really not interested in us and our space rockets. Some scientists and physicists even believe that the absence of communication is caused by the existence of a predator species, which intelligent civilizations are afraid of, and hence refrain from broadcasting such signals in order not to expose their whereabouts. The common consensus is that if there are others out there transmitting signals, we're probably just listening incorrectly. We do not now have the necessary technology or understanding of the universe to receive or decode any of the signals. However, according to the Drake equation, if a civilization can last at least a century after inventing transmission technology, there may be 10 civilizations in the Milky Way galaxy alone. But what if they can't live for 100 years after inventing this technology? As we begin to build our own transmission technology, we also develop nuclear power, accelerate climate warming, and deplete our food resources due to overpopulation. Is it such a stretch to believe that an advanced civilization could not live for 100 years after inventing space-penetrating transmission technology? If this is the case, we can replicate the Drake equation and see how the result changes. If civilizations can only live for 10 years after developing this technology, then n equals 1, implying that we could be the only sentient life in our galaxy, if not the entire universe. But consider this, if humans ever discovered alien life, how would we react to it? If we ever learn that we have discovered alien life, it will be one of the most significant moments in human history, and the repercussions would be enormous. Given highly publicized recent claims of UFOs or Unidentified Aerial Phenomena, UAP, as they've been rebranded, cited by US military pilots, UFO organizations, and specialists have been asking for full disclosure that alien contact has previously occurred and may even be occurring today. Meanwhile, powerful observatories such as NASA's new James Webb Space Telescope are providing us with unprecedented views of the universe. 
Such information could eventually lead us to believe that Earth is not the only inhabited planet and that life is widespread throughout the universe. That knowledge would almost certainly have far-reaching implications for our perception of ourselves and our role in the cosmos. Researchers are investigating the psychological effects of such an announcement, which some people may find difficult to accept. When humans do find evidence of alien life, we will take it rather well, according to results presented to the American Association for the Advancement of Science annual meeting in Austin, Texas. Of course, I would also predict that if a hostile armada showed up near Jupiter, we wouldn't be happy, study author Michael Varnum of Arizona State University said. Looking at a mix of news headlines and survey responses, Varnum and his colleagues found that people's reactions to detections of alien life both hypothetically and to the famously false announcement of microbial fossils from Mars are generally quite positive. To be honest, I wasn't at all sure what we would find, Varnum said. It is worth noting that in fiction, often the discovery of extraterrestrial life is portrayed as having negative societal or psychological consequences. However, not everyone thinks that the study's findings can be generalised. For one thing, some experts argue that there is a quantum leap between accepting the presence of relatively harmless microbes on the next planet over and confronting an intelligent, technological alien race. Extrapolating from one scenario to the other is not always accurate. Furthermore, reactions to living aliens, whether microbial or not, are likely to differ significantly from those to fossils, which is the situation that the authors investigated with stories about the Martian meteorite. What would your reaction be if scientists discovered alien life? Tell us about it in the comments section.